That's it. I've had it with the slug daddy and his shit. All this Daniel Bryan hate for no reason. So I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him good. I'm going to get him where it hurts the most. I'm going to mess with his audio on the Raw review. Let's see how you like that, Schweig Daddy. Yeah, I eat shit and like the taste of it, but shh. It'll be our little secret, guys. Don't let them know, okay? When the WWE tries, I actually try to enjoy the show. And I have to say for this Go home edition of Raw before WWE Fastlane. It felt like the WWE was putting forth some effort. That they were trying. That they cared. And that carried over to me. I tried to enjoy this show. I put in some effort to enjoy this show and actually, frankly, did kind of enjoy this show. I mean, when I saw Cena coming out to start off, I was like, okay, here we go, 15, 20 minutes talking, well, people evolved in, it's gonna have a whole lot of goddamn thing. Well, that's not what we got, thankfully. Thankfully. Now Cena set himself at the beginning of his promo day, wasn't gonna try and bore us with his resume, instead he just set out to bore us with the same talking points he's been using the past eight or nine years as he so often does. At least his talking was short, at least Bruce had a lot of their talking was relatively short, and we got right to the matter, and this came across so much better to me, this was so much of a better way to start off a raw, and impressive Cena to me works so much better. It's so much easier to at least get behind him a little bit, and actually believe what he's doing when he comes across as aggressive, when he's vanilla and bland, it just doesn't work, it comes across artificial, comes across funny. I like impressive Cena so much better, and I'm okay with what they had to do to Bruce because Bruce had done to him, that's fine. However, with that said, I hope John Cena understands the task before him, Sunday Fast. He must put over Rusev, and he must put over Rusev big. The whole thing about Cena never giving up, here's a perfect time to have Cena give up. This is a perfect time if you want to sit there and go the old man Cena around for whatever reason. If you want to go the doubt Cena around again for the umpteen dozen times, at least provide some reasons for us to doubt Cena. At least provide us some reasons to believe that he might not be able to beat somebody for a damn change. That's what must happen. Rusev must go over clean on Cena Sunday. And if they do a wishy washy finish, the only way it works is if Cena gets so frustrated and so agitated that he gets himself disqualified, suggesting that he can't beat Rusev physically and that perhaps Rusev has also beat him mentally. Imagine how much better of a story heading into WrestleMania is going to be if he do something along those lines instead of what they usually do with Cena. It was a pretty good night for Dean Ambrose. Not only did he rock the hell out of that cult forward, but he also rocked the hell out of that Johnny Asu when he was doing that weekend update crap. It was good stuff, man. It's showing some range of versatility in Ambrose's character. Uh, Ambrose versus Harper was a good match. It was quite good, actually. Uh, then you later on in the night, you had Barrett taking on Mizdow, and the whole theme of the night was Ambrose trying to chase down Wade Barrett to get him to sign this contract for an IC title match at Fastlane. And I love how with Barrett and Mizdow, they did some of the things they used to do, where they were able to mesh two stories into each other, yet break them off at the same time. And what I really like about this, actually, is it's an actual attempt to make a storyline out of this and not just a match out of this. There's a big difference. They're trying to give some consequence. They're trying to give some meaning. I don't know how much of a fuck I still give about Ambrose versus Barrett for the IC title, but at least they're trying. And I'll give the WWE credit for trying. So often I say, I'm tired of the match, 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 match format for the mid-card matches. They're not just giving us match, match, match format for the mid-card match here, at least in this case. They're trying to make something out of this IC title feud. And I really, frankly, hope that now that they've had Ambrose chasing so long, I know he had Barrett sign the contract in that bullshit way, I really hope, frankly, that these guys don't touch until WrestleMania because it's going to make it mean that much more when they actually do. Fuck Fastlane. Push this shit off to WrestleMania. It's always good, daddy, to see the American dream dusty woes. Especially when he around the fruit of his loins and Cody Rhodes and Gold Dust Daddy. And I have to say is that I liked where they were kind of teasing that they were going to bring these two guys together, the two brothers, Stardust and Gold Dust. I was hoping that was meaning that they were actually going to try and go down that path a little bit before they just broke them off. And part of the reason for that is because I've been waiting for this for a while. I want to see Cody Rhodes versus Gold Dust. And I want to see this match at WrestleMania, not wasted at a pay-per-view like Fastlane. I will say, they went with the turn, and the way it was being set up, I was hoping they were actually going to kind of swerve us a little bit and have Goldust be the one to turn, not Stardust. But it is what it is. But at least what we got to see was Cody show his range with that great promo that he cut on the American Dream, the fruit of Dusty Woods' loins. I just hope that they wait for this match till WrestleMania. And I just hope that they get the American Bleem involved with this match heading into WrestleMania. Fastlane can wait.
This is something we've been waiting for for years as hardcore fans. This is something that frankly deserves a spot at WrestleMania 31, and I hope the WWE is smart enough to fight the temptation to rush things, fast track things, and will wait just a little bit longer because the payoff could be very nice indeed. Um, excuse me, Snow Cone. I believe you have your own segment on the show, thank you. This is Panda's time, and this is Panda's time. Zoom in real close on me. Oh, hello, ladies. I look so pretty, don't I? This is my time to talk about Ryback. Because Ryback rules. Feed me more. Feed me more. And if Brock Lesnar needs an opponent for WrestleMania, I think Ryback is the perfect man for the job. I'm sorry, man, but I just don't get it. Why do so many of you think Paige is sexy? Seriously! Not only that, so many of you were sitting there tweeting about it last night when you saw Paige in a bath towel that she makes you want to visit the state bank. That you think she's freaking hot. That you'd want to plow her and put imaginary fictitious babies inside of her. She has no body. If she's sexy, then what does that say about the state of the Divas division today? I mean, for crying out loud, if 14-year-old emo girls are your thing, then so be it. I, but seriously, let's really evaluate the situation here. Paige has about as much body as I do. Just think about that for a second. She has as much body as I do. Look at it. I'm in the back house just like she was. What the hell's the difference? So basically wanting to visit the state bank to her is like wanting to visit the state bank to me. And while I would understand, that's ridiculous. That would mean that I would be one of the sexiest teams in WWE. Oh, look at my cleavage line. It's about as big as Paige is. How sad and terrible is that? What's even more sad and terrible, though, is that the WWE resorts to this type of stupid shit with Paige. She's supposed to be the anti diva She's supposed to be something different. And instead, the best we could do involving her is having the Bella steal her outfit so that way she can put on some other crap and wrestle in the ring of some bedazzled kind of polka dotted tutu. That's the best you could come up with for a Divas beat WWE? That's the best you got? And even more specifically, when it comes to the Divas division, Paige is the best you got? Of all the Divas you're gonna put in a bath house, you put Paige in there? Might as well done me. Shit, look at it. There ain't no difference in the body, that's for damn sure. Oh, Schleg Daddy, would you please shut the hell up? I know I'm not the only one. Now, once they saw Paige, they visited the Spank Bank. So hot. Want to touch her, honey? I can't help it, like that. If you don't understand that we like our women like we like ourselves, white as a light, flat as a board, and white as a feather. But there was more, so much more on this show. The Henry Dolph Ziggler versus Seth Rollins. Why can't this be a match at Fastlane? Why can't this be a match at WrestleMania? Oh my God! Dolph Ziggler versus Seth Rollins. I can't take it. I can't take it. These are two of the best wrestlers in the world, and these are clearly two of the guys that the WWE needs to be built around because these guys are the personification of what professional wrestling is all about today. Thank you. So, at least I will say the WWE is being consistent. They're trying to make you care. They're trying to force you to care about the face-off between Triple H and Sting at Fastlane coming this Sunday and the inevitable match between the two of these guys at WrestleMania 31. But as Triple H is sitting there in the ring during this promo segment, praise God, it just wouldn't be God if he didn't get his own promo segment on this show. I'm thinking about several things that have absolutely nothing to do with Sting versus Triple H at WrestleMania or even thinking about their showdown, their face off Sunday at Fastlane. And when I see Ric Flair, I'm wondering just how drunk he is. I'm wondering if he's Ric Flair drunk, if he's crossed over to Chris Berman drunk, and that's a whole different level of drunk, best believe. Um, I'm wondering if Vince and Kevin Dunn are secretly backstage in the gorilla position beating themselves and each other off over the thought of Triple H doing his best to bury WCW. You know, I'm wondering if uh, Triple H is trying to ask Ric Flair for some personal advice. You know, how to make sons. Because I'm thinking about it the whole time this is going on, and I'm saying, I even tweeted this, I said, you know, how many sons have the Breakfast Club members had? I'm also thinking about Shawn Michaels. I think he's the one that actually had a son. And how the hell did he have a ginger kid? There's all this random shit that I'm thinking of. The whole point is, no matter how much the WWE wants us to care, no matter how much the WWE tries to get us to care, I do not give the flyingest of flying fucks about anything involving Triple H taking on Sting at WrestleMania 31. Sorry. Apparently, they bring it back the primetime players. 
Well, snow cone down with that. I say it's straight to the tag team championships for these two. Yeah, you wanna know why? Because these guys are worth millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. This is just a general thought. And then watching this week's show. It's 2015. Why must Kate and Big Show be featured like their big time relevant things and people? Why must they still be featured in big spots? Why does every week goes through this? Why are they doing this? Because it almost seems like they're building towards Kane versus Big Show having a match at WrestleMania. Well, if that's the case. I have one question for you guys, and you can debate this down below. Would you be okay with Kane versus The Big Show at WrestleMania if the stakes were it was a retirement match? Or would it just be too much apathetic suck for you to give a fuck about it, even if that one of them would go the fuck away? I know a lot of you can't get enough of the Romans, and a lot of you just want to hate on him. You know, haters gonna hate. But Roman Reigns beat Kane. Doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it goes in the wind column for the Samoan Stead Muffin. And I know a lot of you are living in this fantasy land that Roman's going to lose on Sunday. Well, be five full thumb. How could you be so fucking dumb? Roman Reigns is the great midget slayer. And there's no bigger midget in WWE today than Daniel Bryan. Please, exactly. Daniel Bryan facing Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. How stupid. Roman Reigns is going to beat that midget's ass. Because that's what he do. Believe that. Hell yeah, bitches. Here's who Roman Reigns has on his side. A beagle named Summer and the Schleg Daddy. When the best thing you've got going for you, when your cheering session consists of a dog that licks their own butt, you've got issues and you've got problems. But the biggest issue of all for Roman Reigns is Daniel Bryan. Because Daniel Bryan can't be stopped. We will not be denied. And he clearly is the best option to face Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 31 for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. You saw it clearly on Raw. Charisma, Daniel Bryan's got it, Roman Reigns does it. Mike skills, Daniel Bryan's got it, Roman Reigns does it. Abilities in the ring, Daniel Bryan's got it, Roman Reigns does it. If Roman Reigns didn't stick his nose in business where it didn't belong, Daniel Bryan would have quickly dispensed of the big show. And do you know why? It's because of the same reason that Daniel Bryan will go on to win Sunday and go on to beat Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 31. That's because Daniel Bryan is the best. Motherfucker wrestling the world. The world! The world! Oh, I'm gonna go touch myself now. A couple of things I got out of what the WWE was doing with Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan throughout the night. First, is that Daniel Bryan looks like the dwarf version of the Berserker. He really does. He's got the Viking hair, he's got the Viking beard, and the goatskin boots. All we need is some type of vest, and off to the races you go. But all joking aside, I did enjoy the back and forth between Reigns and Bryan throughout the night. And I find it funny, as we're going throughout the night, uh, everybody's pointing towards a Roman Reigns heel turn, and everybody's buying some of the signals WWE is trying to put out there that Reigns is about to turn heel. Yet it's Bryan who's the one that's actually acting like the heel. He's the one saying the crap on commentary. He's the one doing the things to get involved. He's the one putting the needle into Reigns' back. He's the one going after Reigns first. So, with everybody pointing in this way, it's almost like the WWE is setting it up this way. And I almost wonder if this is where they're going. Are they actually going to turn Daniel Bryan heel as the ultimate F you to all of you? Are they going to turn him into the ultimate yes man, if you will? Uh, because my thing here is, is I still don't really know what the fuck WWE is trying to do, and I still don't know what WWE is really hoping to accomplish here. Because to me, instead of really getting behind Roman Reigns, who you decided to have win the Royal Rumble, you kind of backed off of him and half-assed him. I mean, you had him beat Kane by count-out. Either push him or you don't fucking push him. And then when it comes to Daniel Bryan, you know, if you're getting behind him, then get behind him. 
then why didn't you just have him win the freaking Rumble to begin with? Because the most ridiculous thing about it now is that, yes, WWE has gotten me interested in seeing Roman Reigns versus Daniel Bryan, but unfortunately, this is the mania feud that I now want for these two. I don't want to see either person feud with or wrestle Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. If that was the WWE's plan, well then, <laughs> mission accomplished. Because now I don't really want to see Roman Reigns take on Brock Lesnar. And I most certainly don't want to see Daniel Bryan take on Brock Lesnar. I want to see these two guys feud. I want to see these two guys go at it. And I just wonder what the WWE is really trying to accomplish here by trying to present Roman Reigns as a heel when you should be trying to get him over as a babyface and having Daniel Bryan there the whole time. It just didn't make any fucking sense. It's like they're giving this to people during the free month of the WWE Network to shut people up, to get more of the hardcore eyeballs on the network because by God and large, those are the only people that would be bothered to fucking subscribe to the network to begin with. And just so that way you can have a returning Sheamus come and cost Daniel Bryan the match, and then you're off to Sheamus and Daniel Bryan. So if that was what you're going to end up doing, then why the fuck even do this? I mean, if you're going to sit there and just end up having a triple threat between Reigns, Bryan, and Lesnar at WrestleMania 31, then why the fuck do this? I mean, the WWE tried here, but you only get partial points for effort. You've got to have a clue of what the fuck you're doing. And I really hope the WWE knows what the fuck they're doing, but I most certainly don't think that they do. They have now taken this and made me want a Roman Reigns versus Daniel Bryan feud. I don't even give a fuck about the champion and the championship match at WrestleMania 31. Good job, WWE. So as I stated at the beginning, I felt like the WWE was trying this week. They were putting forth some effort this week. And I put forth some effort this week as a fan. I tried to enjoy it, and I ended up doing it. You know, they did some good things for Fastlane. They also planted some potentially nice seeds for WrestleMania. Uh, the problem is, though, is that several things in the works for WrestleMania I just don't care about. I just don't want to see. I don't want to see Cena versus Rusev at WrestleMania because I don't think that's the right opponent for Rusev and I really don't want to see what they'll do with Rusev come WrestleMania when he runs up against the John Cena problem and the John Cena monster. You already know how I think about Triple H versus Sting at WrestleMania. Now they're really going in the direction of Bray Wyatt versus The Undertaker. They're telegraphing that and that's just a lose-lose situation for all people and all parties involved. And then Lesnar versus Reigns and or Daniel Bryan. I don't want to see that either at this point. So some of the biggest, most important marquee matchups that WrestleMania 31 is going to be built on the shoulders of, built on the back of, I have little to no interest in fucking seeing. Which means that at this particular moment, I lack interest and excitement for WrestleMania 31. So if that's what the WWE set out to do with this week's show, well, <laughs> again, mission accomplished.